In this video, we're going to finish the design of a world program where the data definitions involve the reference rule. As we saw last time, the program is this timed countdown, and we had identified that the changing information was both the current number and current color of the light. Okay, let's quickly review the types from last time. The timed light type comment has a reference here, TL color. This is a reference to this type comment here. So I'll mark that with an R. And because of that reference, it goes from this reference to this type definition. Because of that reference, the template function for timed light has a call, a corresponding call, to the template function for TL color. So that was the types and the templates. Let's get on now with designing a function. What I've done in order to move things along more quickly is that I've already done Big Bang. I've done the main function with the call to Big Bang. We're using onTick and we're using toDraw. I've named the tick function next time light and I've set up the wish lists properly. Okay. So I've got a wish list here for next time light, and I've actually gone one step farther just in order to save time in this video, is that I've got, um, I've already done the examples. So if we call next time light with a light that's colored red and number one, we'll get back a light that's red, number zero. On the other hand, if we call make next time light with a light that's red at zero, we'll get a light that's green at the start number. And there's a corresponding example for yellow and green. So let's see, we've got signature, purpose, stub, examples. The next step of the recipe, as always, is template. So let's go get the template. We're going to use the template for timed light. So we'll go up here and copy it. That's always the best way to get it. We'll go up here and copy it. and we'll bring it down here and we'll leave a note that says we took the template from timed light we'll comment out the stub and we'll rename the template function to be next time light okay that's good now we've got a template, we've got some examples, we've got a signature. We know we're supposed to produce a timed light. And there really seem to be two cases. There's the case where the current color is, the current number is zero, in which case we have to change the color and set the number back to the start. And there's the case where the current number is greater than zero, where all we do is the color stays the same, we just decrement the, um, the current number. So let's see, that's two different cases, that's an if. And what I like to do when I do an if is I, I add if to the template and then I take the entire previous template and I go ahead and make three copies of it. One for the if question, one for the true answer, and one for the false answer. And now I can work on the question, the true answer, and the false answer with the whole template. So let's see. Let's, let's deal with the simple case as the true case. So the simple case is when the number is greater than zero. Okay, well there's the number. In order to find out if I'm in the simple case, I don't care about the color at all. I really just care is the current number greater than zero? Okay, so if the current number is greater than zero, then I'm in, I'm in a case like this, where I'm going to make a new light, and let's deal with the counter first. The counter just has to get decremented, so I'm just going to subtract 1 from the counter because it goes from 1 to 0 in this example for 
right? And here it always says you decrement it. But the color stays the same. So if the color stays the same, I don't really need to do anything to the color. I just need to produce the same color. So I'm going to get rid of this call to fund for TL color. I'm just getting rid of this right out of the template. And there we go. That seems to be the current case. And what I can do now, actually, is I can go ahead and run this program as it is. And what's going to happen, of course, is it's going to end up blowing up because it's going to say that it encountered a template. Because after all, there is a template. But notice that because my first test is the first example, that test actually ran. I'll do it again. That test actually runs and it's in the middle of the second test that it failed. So the first test passed. So I actually know, it's a little bit convoluted, but I actually know that this first test passed. All I'm showing you now is that if you start to get complicated programs that have ifs or cons in them, if your first test tests just one branch, you may be able to go ahead and run that test. Okay, so let's see. We do know that we're not done yet because of this template. Let's go ahead and finish that. So we've got this first case done. Now, the remaining three cases are cases where the number is zero, and so we need to have a new timer at the start number with a different color. So let's see. We need to do make timed light and the new value of the number is going to be just start number. And what has to happen to the color is we have to advance the color. We need the next color. Now, the decision we're about to make here is in some sense the heart of the reference rule. What you might be tempted to do here is say, oh, I see what happens. It goes from red to green to yellow to red. To green. You might be tempted to say, I'll tell you what, I'll just put a cond here. And if it's red, we'll make it go to green. And you do the other two cases of the cond and do that whole thing. And what we're going to say is that you should not do that. We're going to say that doing this is terrible, bad. It will have awful consequences, real fire and brimstone type stuff. But in all seriousness, what we know now is that if you program this way, if you make this kind of thing show up here, programs start to get complicated. And we have empirical evidence that they get harder to maintain. What we're going to do is give you a slightly different rule, and here's the way the rule is going to work. We're going to back up here a bit. That's where we were, and we realized, oh look, we need to go from red to green, yellow to red, green to yellow. And here's the rule. The rule says, hey, I see fun for TL color in the template. And what that says to me is it says, if I need to operate having knowledge of the details of the TL color type, I need to call a function. And that's exactly what I need here. I do need details of the TL color type. I need to know that the TL color type is this enumeration. And so I'm not going to do it here. I'm going to make a new function for it. So here's the new function. I'll just decide that it's going to be called next TL dash color and I'll wish for it. It'll consume a TL color. It'll produce a TL color. It produces the next TL color. It's a wish list entry because we don't have it yet. And here's the stub.
So the key thing that happened here was I got myself to this place and I wanted to operate with knowledge of the details of the teal color type and the template told me you better make what's called a helper function to do it. So now I have a wish list entry for this helper function. But this helper function is something we've seen before. We know how to design this function. It's just operating on a simple enumeration. So I'm not going to take the time to do it in detail now. I'll just pretend that I'm a really fast typist. There we go. Now I have the design of the next TL color function. Given that it's complete, I can run all of my examples now. And what's happening here? Well, this is just that my render test is failing. That's because I still have a stub for render. We haven't gotten down there to doing that. But the render test is the only one that's failing, which means that all of my tests on next time light and next time light color are passing. And so this is working for me now. Again, let me repeat the big thing that happened here. The real thing that happened here happened a while ago. Back when we put the reference from time light to time light color. That reference, remember, led to this call from this template to this template. And then when we were down here designing next time light and we needed to operate on the details of the color, there was a call here. Before I put that there, it said fun for TL color. And what that is telling me is it's, it's reminding me that in the types there's a reference and therefore here if I want to operate on the details of time light color I need to use a helper function to do it. And then of course I went to design the helper function. So the big thing that's going on here is way up here in the type comments when I have a reference from a type I define to another type I define, I'm actually making a decision in the future that when I have a function that operates on this type, it will use helper functions to operate on this type. So here at the level of designing the data definitions, I'm actually making decisions about the design of the functions. That's a crucially important point. It's something we're going to see throughout this part of the course. And it's something that happens in all big program design. You do a lot of the program design when you design the data. So that's really the biggest point. But for completeness, let me go ahead and drop in a design that I already have for the render function. I'll just pop in the one that I have. We'll run it and see that all the tests pass. I'll just make a couple quick points about this. Notice that here we're not using the color at all. So since we're not using the color at all, we definitely don't need to have a helper function call. Okay. So the rule isn't that whenever the template has a call to another template function there's a helper. Here we don't have a helper function call because we're not doing anything with the color at all. And even up here in next time light. Notice that in the case where we don't change the color, where we just pass the color along unchanged, we don't have a helper call. The rule doesn't require us to have a helper call if we're not going to do anything with the color. It's only here where we really need to operate on the details of the TL color type that we're required to have a helper call. Okay. So it's really important to understand the fact that this template here has fun for TL color in it doesn't mean that every single function that's based on this template will have a helper call. It does mean that every single function based on this template that needs to do something that involves the details of the TL color type should have a helper call. That's really the moral of the story. If you've got a complicated enough information domain, 
that your types end up wanting to have references in them in order for them to be manageable, you're really making decisions about the way the resulting functions will be. And that's not a bad thing, it's a great thing. It allows you to make decisions about lots of functions you'll design in the future by making careful decisions about the data you're designing now.